Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about five iconic fragrances from my collection, so stay tuned for that. If you like top 10 lists, fragrance reviews, clone comparisons, and first impressions, hit that subscribe button for more great content. So recently, um, a Quality Fragrances did do a tag series. Now he was not he was not the originator of this series, he got tagged by somebody else to do this and he kind of made an open tag, I thought I would take advantage and do this and the idea is to talk about five iconic fragrances that are in your collection so i did try and think about this a little bit tried to include at least some that aren't as talked about as much but i do think they're certainly uh, quite iconic and have contributed a lot or um, they're really really great fragrances and uh, you know what without further ado i am going to get right into it now the first one um the original of this is definitely extremely, extremely iconic, but I don't have the original. I have one of the flankers, and that is Terre Hermes Eau Très Fresh. Now, Terre Hermes is a very iconic masculine fragrance, in my opinion. A lot of people consider this to be a masterpiece. It's certainly one that is not for everyone. It's a little bit more mature. It's a little bit different. I do find it has um, a vetivery, peppery vibe uh, with a dirty orange. And I do actually really, really enjoy the dirty orange aspect and that's one of the things i like about the otre fresh version of the fragrance is that it takes that part of the fragrance that i like the most and it amps it up so it has a lot of the same qualities as the original terra hermes but it's a little bit aquatic in the opening um, which makes it great for spring summer it is you know right around the corner and um, it does still have a nice woody dry down that does give off the impression of a bit of a vetiver that, you know, that orange is there and it opens up nice with a little bit of aquatic nature. The one thing it's really missing from the original is that I don't find this to be spicy at all. I do find there is certainly a peppery vibe. And uh, if you've tried the O Intense Vetiver, it is one that I find has, um, I can really pick up that Chez Juan pepper. This one, there's no pepperiness, um, there's no spiciness that I personally detect. It instead has a, a bit of an aquatic nature, which does make it easier to like, does make it a little more versatile um, and is really, really great. And nonetheless, I think that Terra Hermes line is absolutely iconic. It is one that every man should check out. Obviously, it's not one that's for everyone, but it is one that everyone should check out and see if they like it because it is one of those really iconic fragrances. The next one is probably one of the giants of the gourmand world. And there was a couple different fragrances I thought about picking um, and I decided to just go with one gourmand because there is more than one that I could have picked But this one is of course the legendary Italica I mean, this is one that's a little bit probably more well known in Fragcom. You know, the average consumer is not going to um, Really know about this one although I have found it's very pleasant easy to wear people have enjoyed this and if somebody commented, you know, it smelled like uh, a Japanese treat or something and they really did enjoy it which was a you know is a nice compliment uh, but this one you know it is it is this really iconic exclusive really nice gourmand fragrance i think it's become a little bit more available as zergeoff has had it on the um website a couple of times now and um but this one is just this really beautiful i get this really nice almond hint of strawberry in the in the opening but it comes off very much like an almond biscuit as this one starts to dry down it gets very creamy so there just gets this very milky i guess the the almond mixes with the top toffee and it becomes a very milky uh creamy almond it's just very very sensual um and it does last a very long time so it does have a quite a unique smell in my opinion and to me this is absolutely uh a fantastic gourmand fragrance and worth checking out if you like gourmands and you get the chance to try this one out try this one out the next one arguably not the most iconic but uh leather fragrance but i don't own the other one the other one being tuscan leather this one being ombre leather so if i had to actually rate it i would say tuscan leather is probably more iconic it's been talked about a lot i mean drake has a rap song about it ombre leather is kind of like the designer version of tuscan leather if you want to think about it that way or the more mainstream version it's much easier to like and much easier to wear but to me this is like the best leather fragrance for people that don't like leather fragrance if you or if you want to try an intro to a leather dominant fragrance absolutely ombre leather is the way to go this one has like this beautiful leather couch kind of vibe like 
I remember one time I was in a club. I don't go to clubs very often, but I was in a, a club with a friend. And um, I was sitting on the couch, which is awesome because they had a couch. And it smelled like the leather smell smelled exactly like ombre leather and it was so nice like it was just so nice and relaxing to sit on that couch to chill have a drink with some friends and um and having that smell very very pronounced so it's a really really nice smell ombre leather you know it just has this very nice uh, somewhat sweet swedish kind of vibe um that just works really really well and i think it is icon iconic for sure um, you know, it's an excellent leather fragrance and as I mentioned, this is the one I would recommend for anyone who hasn't really tried a leather dominant fragrance, wants to try them out. This is probably the nicest, uh, most versatile and easy to like leather fragrance of all time. In my opinion, there might be other ones. Um, there might be other ones. The next one is another iconic one that, you know, I think it's one that got left behind. I've been talking about it a little bit more lately, partially because I did just recently get a bottle, and that's Allure Um Sport. Now, a lot of people know the Extreme, and that's one of the things that you have to give credit to this one, is that this one came before the O Extreme, right? Without this, there wouldn't be the O Extreme. And I think in, in a lot of ways, the Edition Blanche probably wouldn't um, work without this one too, because there are elements of this one that really give me that vibe, uh, that sort of lemon meringue kind of vibe as well. And so I can see where all of those flankers came from that are very, very popular. This one I find to be more wearable, more versatile, more likable than the Oak Stream. The sweetness, I think they get it just right. It's not too overbearing, it's not too thick, and it still has a lot of versatility. Um, and it is a really, really great, easy to wear men's fragrance. You know, it has this beautiful, beautiful orange, which comes off slightly aquatic um, in the opening of the fragrance. And it does, start to dry down into a nice sort of creamy fragrance that um, at times in this sort of transition between the mid and the dry down, I get definitely this um, sort of lemon meringue kind of vibe. And the orange also mixes in there to make it a really nice sort of creamy citrus vibe that then dries down into a very nice creamy sensual fragrance. So honestly, this is one to check out. Even if you have the Oak Stream, if you like the Oak Stream, it's worth at least getting a sample of this one. Um, or going to a boutique smelling this one because it is really really nice and personally I prefer it I know a lot of people prefer it as well now the next one and the last one is one that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough uh, especially from the Killian line so it is a Killian fragrance and this is one of those really iconic uh, gentlemanly fragrances and so that one is none other than Musk Oud by Killian so I mean, when you think about a collection or even just a small, if you want to think about it still as a collection, a small fragrance collection, I mean, you'd think you'd want to have one fragrance that's really good for formal occasions if you're going somewhere really nice, something fancy, something luxurious, something that, uh, you know, has that kind of powerful smell to it. And for me, that one is definitely Musk Oud. Now, I do have other fragrances that can fit into that role, but this one just is very luxurious. Um, it smells very high quality. It's a nice, complex fragrance. It does have quite an intense booziness that is coupled with this really, really powerful musk. And the musk isn't at all uh, skanky. So this is not a dirty animalic kind of musk. It's a very, very clean musk. And to me, this is actually Alberto Marialis's best fragrance that he's ever ever made that I've smelled anyways and I haven't smelled all of his fragrances to be fair but this one is just it's peak craftsmanship really is what it is it's it's just so well put together there is also rose in this one I believe and I do get that definitely the rose is not too overpowering but there is definitely a hint of that the only thing I'll say is that this isn't a really dominant oud fragrance so there is woodiness in this one and it does start to come out more as this one dries down, but if you're looking for something that's a very, very powerful oud fragrance, this definitely is not it. But it is a um, exceptional fragrance for that very formal, classy, luxurious um, dress up, like a suit and tie kind of occasion. This one just goes so well, so perfectly for that. And I think it is definitely iconic in that sense. It absolutely captures everything about those occasions. Anyways, guys. 
I'm going to cut that video there. There is my um, five iconic fragrances. I'm also going to leave just an open tag because why not? So any reviewers that do happen to see this video would love to see what you have in your collection that you think is iconic. So please do, you know, take your time if you want and do this video. Um, it would be very interesting to see. And you know what? Leave a comment down below. You know, what are some of the fragrances in your collection that are iconic that you think are really, uh, you know, symbolic of fragrance, of fragrance occasions, um, of all of those things that you think of either it being, you know, luxury or, you know, gourmand or, you know, spring summer versatility, whatever the case is, a huge influential fragrance. Leave that comment down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.